Well, this is a rare sight. A nice sunny day here in the UK, and we've not had one of these for about two and a half weeks now, so I'm going to take this opportunity whilst we've got it to get the DJI Mini 2 back into flight. It's just been so windy and rainy. Oh, it's been miserable. Anyway, I'm going to be using the Skyreach ND filters for today's flight. If you're not familiar with these ND filters, then effectively what they do is limit the amount of light that is able to get through your lens and that's just going to give you greater control over the camera exposure settings letting you capture more cinematic shots so I'll talk a little bit about that further as we actually get into flight but without any further ado let's get set up okay so let's go ahead and just get the drone into the air so I'm currently using an ND16 filter. I'm also using my strobe light so that I can get uh, further visual line of sight. I did make a video about those a while back and I have still got plans to do a video of the strobe light at night time if you guys want to check that out. I just need to build my confidence up really to actually fly the drone at night. So what I'm going to do here, the reason I'm using an ND16 filter is because it is really bright, but you can see that the MM value in the bottom right hand corner is minus 1.3 now we want to get that as close to zero as possible i could use an nd8 filter but i already did i tried it and the mm value was well above zero again not good so what i've opted for is to go for the nd16 and we're just going to take that iso iso value up to 200 and as you can see that brings the value much closer to zero now you don't really want to raise that iso value above 100 if you can help it because you're going to start to introduce noise into the image and the whole point of the ND filter is that it's going to give you a more cinematic look especially when it comes to motion blur and by raising that ISO value you are going to lose some of that however 200 is still quite low and I think it's worth it just to give a little bit more brightness to the image but not raising it enough where we are going to start introducing that noise now I'm not actually going to be filming a lot of motion today I'm going to be honest with you the other thing as well is that I'm currently recording at 30 FPS and that's why I've got the shutter speed to 1 over 60. I'm going to try and get that shutter speed to about double your FPS shooting FPS. So for me that's 60 for 30. Now the best cinematic look is going to be achieved with 24 frames per second and a 1 over 48 shutter speed. With the DJI Mini 2 that would have to be 1 over 50 shutter speed which is the closest you can get. However, the reason I'm not filming at 24 frames per second it's because I have all these other cameras here and just to, due to the various limitations of the different devices I need to keep a consistency and 30 frames per second is the best I can do across all of these cameras for the final edit. Now let's just gain a little bit more height here and as you can see we've got a nice image actually. I'm going to take it over to the car park and drop the gimbal down and the reason for that is without adjusting the settings manually uh, we might lose a little bit of exposure without having that sky in the image so i'm just going to see how that looks obviously with auto exposure the drone is going to be able to change things on the fly no pun intended so i'll take that one but with manual settings then that isn't going to be the case so let's just drop over or fly over rather to the car park and we'll drop the gimbal down taking it to 78 meters so that we don't annoy people we are in a public space of course and the only real rule with the DJI Mini 2 is that you can't fly over crowds which we're not going to do we're in a very rural area here I just want to see how the exposure looks yeah I can see that the MM value has now dropped to 2.3 which is quite a bit lower than we were at previously let's just move the drone over a touch Try and get that car park nice and central. You can get some really nice shots with this thing. And now what I'm going to do, I know it's not the most exciting landmark, a small car park for various dog walkers, uh, but it's the best I've got around this area. I'll tell you what, this has been a fantastic little hobby throughout lockdown, this has. And it's something I never thought I was going to be getting into YouTube with. I'm just taking some pan shots here. And we've got a bit of car there, a bit of movement adds to the cinematic effect. Okay, and now I'll take it back again. And just see what we can do with it, I don't know. Just playing about with these ND filters. The minus 2.3 isn't the best exposure result, but it's got to be better than using auto exposure. With a really high shutter speed, really high 
ISO. And we'll just take this past the car park to the other side. Yeah, there we go. Let's just raise the gimbal up once more. Bring the sky back into frame. Just a brief post-production edit in order to show you the shot straight off the memory card that we just took. So, yeah, as I say, this is taken straight off the DJI Mini 2 memory card. There's no post-production effects here whatsoever. This is simply what the camera was able to capture using that ND16 filter and I think even straight out of the box so to speak it looks absolutely fantastic it really does it manages to capture the incredible colors of the autumn trees here along with the grass and the cars but let's just go ahead and apply just a touch and I do mean a touch of color grading just to create a perhaps more cinematic feel to the shot itself yeah so here we have the same shot once again but with a couple of Hollywood style black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. And as I mentioned, just a very brief amount of color grading to the overall image. And, you know, I think it looks incredible. I really do. These ND filters just give you so much flexibility with your shots. You know, I just would not be able to take this type of shot with the auto exposure settings. The light as it changes would just mean that we'd be getting flashes of brightness and dimming in the video because of the auto exposure adjusting on the fly. This just looks fantastic. But yeah, I've got to say, you know, having this new hobby has really kept me going through lockdown. I've been playing with this drone. It's my first drone, by the way, the DJI Mini 2. But I've had it now for coming up to two months and or just over two months no coming up to two months and i've just been having so much fun with it it's kept me so occupied and i know that many of you folks have been you know enjoying your drones for the same reason but for me yeah, this is definitely something i'm excited to explore further in terms of you know drones and what have you so i've got the sky closer to the sun now i'm not going to keep the sun in frame because that would be a powerful exposure but just about there looks perfect. 200 ISO, 1 over 60 shutter, and 0, 0.0 mm. I can never remember what the mm stands for, but I know we want it as close to zero as possible. So that's looking pretty good. Now, I did mention, didn't I, that I have got my strobe light on. I'm only 300 meters away, and we did test with that strobe light during daylight hours with a nice bright sky such as today, where we can get about 600 meter range which is very impressive actually. One thing to also mention, I've been wanting to speak about this for the last couple of videos. Uh, by the way, thanks for Gavin HR for making a video about this dedicated to this topic. Check him out if you haven't already. But the signal you'll notice keeps dropping into orange and then back up to full range. Well, what's happening there? Well, that is the OcuSync 2.0 technology at play. So what happened with the Mini 1 the predecessor to this model, which didn't have OcuSync 2.0 technology, it would connect to the best Wi-Fi band that was available when the drone found its home point. So, you know, when you're about to take off. But then, of course, when the drone's out and about, that may no longer be the best channel for the drone to connect to. And that's why a lot of people had signal issues and range issues with the Mini 1. Now, the Mini 2 and other drones from DJI that use this OcuSync technology also connect to those same Wi-Fi bands. It's not a new technology in that sense, you know, connecting to some hidden channel that's out there in the ether, in the air that we don't know about. It's still connecting to your bog standard Wi-Fi technology, but it has the ability to detect and change which channel it is detected, uh, connected to literally whenever it needs to. So whatever channel is best when you take off, it will connect to that channel. And then if you're flying over houses or if you're flying over fields at further range, whatever channel is strongest, the drone will be able to connect to that and disconnect from the previous channel whenever it needs to. So that is what you'll see now. I'm over a spot at the minute where it's trying to locate the best channel. But with the Mini 1, if the channel that it was originally connected to was bad, then there'd be nothing we can do at this point. So yeah, just a bit of a bit of an overview of that. But like I say, check out Gavin HR's channel. He's got a dedicated video to OcuSync and it's very informative, I've got to say. So we're just getting a little bit more range, I think. Heading towards the power station, though I don't think we'll we'll make our way all the way there. 
Let's head over this field. Yeah, we're just getting some nice footage here. I'm trying to keep some slower movements for some more cinematic shots. You know, even in normal mode, you don't want to just ram the sticks. That's something I've been learning myself. Otherwise, you are just going to, you know, have very jagged movements and, and lose that, that nice video that you're probably aiming for. And I'm not going to go too much further because I can see the exposure is getting a little extreme over there as we head towards the sun. Yeah, the DJI Mini 2 doesn't handle the sun very well, I've got to say. Even with the ND filters, which are effectively serving as sunglasses. But look at that. Can you guys see the sun reflecting down onto that field there? That's a remarkable contrast between the shadow on the left and the bright field on the right, isn't it? I can even see some reflections of something there on the ground. I'm just going to take a shot of that, I think. And, oops, let's just change the 4K to photo. Now, you don't need ND filters for taking photos like this. Okay, I do just want to mention that. There we go, I'll just take a shot of that. I'll lift the gimbal up as well. Get some more sky in. Yeah, ND filters are really there to help capture motion blur. So, there are times where you'll want to do that when taking photos. But, for the majority of the time, you're not going to really need to do so. So, if you're only planning on getting some photographic shots and not really any video recording, then just stick to auto exposure. It's going to give you, you know, fantastic results. All right then, guys. Well, I think without any further ado, we'll start bringing the drone back. And I seem to have lost a little bit of signal there. So we'll try and get that back. Okay. Drop the gimbal down and start bringing it home. Bum, 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 bum. Here we come. Let's just start reducing that altitude there. Bring it over my field. I'd rather land in my field than somebody else's. Away from the trees. And then a little bit closer. Whee! Look at that. How close was that eh, to me? On a perfect landing, or thereabouts. Yeah, all right then, folks. You know, these ND filters, I find... Oh, let me just turn the light off there. They're absolutely fantastic. They really are. They just give you so much more flexibility when it comes to choosing your cinematic shots that you want to create and what have you. And one of the other bonuses of them is that they actually help to protect your lens as well. So, you know, if there's a little bit of debris floating through the air, or if you, you know, worst comes to worst, take a little bit of a tumble, you could end up just having that extra little bit of protection by having that filter in place. But as always, folks, I really do appreciate you stopping by checking out my channel checking out my video if you enjoyed it perhaps drop a like that really does support the work that i do around here and come back soon for my next dji mini 2 video take care everyone